Hello and thank you for joining us. In this presentation, we're going to be talking about SharePoint and digital signatures, using Sinex to make digital signatures easier. Now you're probably wondering, why should I watch this video? So here's a couple of questions to help you get to that answer. One, do you use SharePoint to store your critical documents? Two, do these documents need to be signed? Three, do you need to ensure you have all required information to validate that digital signature after it is signed? In other words, do you need to go back to that vendor every single time you need to validate the signature, or do you have everything with you when you sign that document? That way later, when you have to validate that digital signature, do you have everything you need? Now if you answered yes to these questions, well, it probably makes sense to watch this video. So let's get started. Here we are in SharePoint Online, and of course this will work with the SharePoint on-premise as well. For purposes of this demo, we're doing SharePoint Online. It also has brought us to the Sinex site right here, and we're going to sign a document. Now there's two different ways to sign a document. One is to select the document, go to the ribbon menu, and from the Sinex option, you choose Sign. Now, Sign is the idea that I am an internal user, a user of SharePoint, and I need to sign this document. Request signatures is the idea that says, I need to send this document out to somebody for them to sign. So it's an external person, a person not in my organization, or not a SharePoint user. And then of course, signature audit trail is simply the ability to see the audit trail for each one of the signatures for this particular document. So the cryptography information, as well as the date and so forth. Now another way to sign the document is from the action menus. And we'll go to the advanced menus here. Sign with Sinex, request signatures, again that's that external piece, and then signature audit trail. Same premises from the ribbon menu. Now the document we're dealing with right here, it's a non-disclosure, we'll scroll down, here's the signature blocks we're dealing with, so this is for internal and this is for external. All right. So let's sign this document. We'll go to our action menu and we'll go to advanced and sign the document. The first thing I'm presented with is, of course, the Sinex screen allows me to agree to legal consent. I hit accept. I then enter my password, and this is my password on the Sinex side. And this may also be coming from your Active Directory as well, so the password really depends on how you want to configure the process. But again, my internal signature, I hit go. I am now brought to the signature block for this document. In this example, we're actually going to put the signed date on there as well, but of course signing the key thing. So I click sign. The signature is now affixed to my document, so it's been digitally signed by myself. If I go back to the document, here's my document. And here, of course, is the date that was affixed automatically, as well as my signature. So that's the internal portion of it. Now let's do the external piece. So I'm going to request an external signature. Now in this example, of course, we need to send information to that person for that external signature. I've got a list here of available people. This list is managed by the appropriate users. You can add and remove people and so forth. Um, this list can also come from other areas. So we're going to send this to Jason Jolly for his approval. And I'll hit request signature. So I'm requesting Jason Jolly, an external user, sign this document. So here is the email notification that Jason received that he has a document to sign. You see, to Jason, you know, dear Jason Jolly. And here's the link in order for him to sign the document. So we'll click on the link. It'll bring him to the Sinex page. Now from here, we'll do that accept for the legal consent. And you'll see it says enter the secret code received on your mobile device. What we did in this example is we did the two-factor authentication. The idea is we not only have the email address for Jason, that's how he got the notification, but we also have his cell phone number. And the idea behind that is we could send him a secret code so we validate that it is Jason that is doing this process. So I got my text message. I put in my secret code and I hit next. Now, if this was the first time that Jason went off and did the signature, he would be asked to set up a password. This example is Jason has done this before, so he could just enter his password. So again, if he is new, the very first time he's been asked to sign something for me, he would have set up a password. But again, in this example, he's already got a password.
So here is his signature block. As you can see to the left, here's the original one from me. Here's his signature block with the date and so forth. I'll click Sign. It'll again ask for his password because we want to make sure he is him. And I will click Sign. Jason has successfully signed the document and all is good. So now let's go back to the Sinex site and we'll go back to our document and you'll notice we have the Adam Storage signature and the Jason Jolly signature. A couple things you'll notice real quick. This one was created for Jason using a particular font. This one was actually done with a pen. So you can actually sign, if you will, create the signature yourself and store that. So when you click that sign button, it uses that signature. So it depends on what you'd like to appear there. So we've got our document all signed. Now, as we talked about earlier, there is an audit trail. So I'm going to click on the advanced menu options again and I'll go to signature audit trail and here is the audit trail for that signature that of course you could review at any time tells you the date time who submitted by was it an internal signature or not when it was signed and then signed by whom and then here is the audit trail information for each of the signatures so if I click on this it provides me an XML file that is a breakdown of the cryptography information and all sorts of other critical information about that signature and that comes into the system as well. So what did we see? Well, the ability to easily sign documents from the ribbon and action menu, the ability for internal users and external parties to sign a document, and the ability to easily access a complete audit trail about those individual digital signatures. So of course, how do you get the solution? Well, reach out to our friends at Synex at www.synex.com and read all about how great their product is. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the integration, feel free to reach out to MicroStrategies. We appreciate your time, and we hope you'll reach out to us to see how we can help you like we help our clients.